Now is a time of much growth for the Hellfire Trading Company, but it's also a time for settling old scores. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Marauders, issue number 17, and find out together, shall we? So then, as you'll recall, in the last issue, Emma Frost and Kitty Pride had delivered a boatload of revenge on Sebastian Shaw for wronging him the way he did. Now the question becomes, what will be done with his son, Shinobi Shaw? Was he in on the attempt on Kate Pride's life? And now that his father has been rendered half an invalid, will he go seeking revenge? The answer is no, not so long as Emma Frost is around, he won't. In fact, as we discover, the white set of the Hellfire Trading Company is actually taking on much greater responsibilities now than ever before. As Shaw and his people end up getting muscled out more and more, naturally this is great for Emma, but this will no doubt cause a major power imbalance in a group that was always supposed to be balanced. Now the B-plot of this issue actually involves Callisto, the former leader of the Morlocks, comes to storm a woman of whom they have had a complicated relationship to say the least. Callisto wants to Storm's help, and soon as it seems that Aurora is planning to move on after the events of Ten of Swords. What does she want help with, you might be wondering? Beauty tips, help moving, depth perception? Nah, none of those things, actually. Callisto wants Storm to help kill her. You'll remember that the only way for a depowered mutant to get their powers back is to die as part of the Crucible Trials. Apocalypse used to run the Crucible Trials by combat, but now he's not around anymore. Now, though, the rules have changed, and you can pick pick your own executioner, and considering that these two have been best frenemies for so long, it only makes sense for Storm to be the one to fight her in the trial. In fact, as we find out later from Silver Samurai, this brand new practice actually has a fun name for itself. Kaishukani, which actually takes its name from old Japanese samurai tradition where an after you committed seppuku on yourself, a trusted friend would lop your head off, saving you from pain. At first, Storm refuses to be part of the Crucible, but when Silver Samurai says that the Fenris twins, the old Hydra villains, have offered their services to be Callisto's opponent, Storm shows up anyway. In a scene that is so incredibly dark, yet weirdly touching at the same time, as Storm actually gives Callisto a real competitive battle before finally ending her life so she can begin it anew with her powers restored. In fact, in a nice bit of poetry from Jerry Duggan here, we discover that Callisto is seeing the island of Krakoa unlike anyone ever has before, given her incredibly super-enhanced senses. Now, back over with the main plot, we see that Emma Frost and her cadre are going back to that mysterious island that we saw in that Magneto one-shot from giant-sized X-Men. And man, am I glad to see this story point come back, what with the weirdly constructed tower with the sentinel face, because that story annoyed the crap out of me how it just went nowhere. Emma says that this site will be home to the first ever Krakoan State Dinner, wherein representatives from all over the world will come and break bread with mutant kind. And because Emma is Emma, she's sure to continue to pour more salt into Shaw's open wound. She mentions that his son Shinobu is kind of interesting as his powers are not at all similar to his father's powers, but are actually very similar to that of Harry Leland, Emma and Shaw's old running buddy from the original Hellfire Club. Oh damn, in just a few sentences, Emma has said that this guy's son might not actually be his son. Now hey, what happened to Captain Kate? She's still the main star of this book, isn't she? Well, she's returned to Madripoor to try and give a reward to the people who took care of Lockheed when he was lost and injured. Captain Kate has picked one hell of a time to show up here, too, as it seems that Verendi, aka the Hellfire Junior Club, is using their money and influence to try and force out all the poorer people from the slums of Madripoor. Now, Kate can't let this stand, not just because it's the right thing to do, but also because she really owes these people for saving Lockheed, and as such, in her role as the Red Queen, she just decides to use some Hellfire Trading Club money to buy up as much property as they can in the slums of Madripoor, making them real estate rivals with Verendi, just to really hit it home, too, about how Kate can do whatever she wants now. Kate strolls into Verendi's headquarters, pours herself a drink, and then gives them an invitation to the big mutant summit dinner coming soon. 
And so that was Marauders issue number 17, everybody, an issue that spins a lot of plates while also dealing with the fallout from X of Swords, something that I had really hoped they would do in the previous issue. In a sea of new and different and interesting X-Men books, I think Marauder stays one of my personal favorites just because the soap opera is so thoroughly on point. It's nice to see Captain Kate evolve as a character and become more confident. You gotta figure that while Kate and Emma are certainly friends now, maybe even sisterly, maybe even more than that, it's only a matter of time before they they start butting heads. Emma hates sharing power, after all. The mention of Harry Leland, too, promises that we may actually be seeing more Hellfire Club connections, too, which I'm sure that would be fun coming down the pipeline, especially as anyone who's dead can be alive again. The Storm Callisto story, while short, was also surprisingly heartwarming in a way I was really not expecting, and now the stage is set for more similar fights to the death in the future. Overall, I'd feel comfortable giving this one an 8 out of 10. X-Men in 2021 looks to be just just as solid as it was in 2020. Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.